Welcome back to Shield Spectrum, where ethical hacking meets intelligence. Today's topic is Footprinting Using Internet Research Services, an essential phase in ethical hacking and OSINT. We'll also explore how AI can assist in automating and enhancing this process. Disclaimer, this video is made for educational purposes only. We do not encourage or promote any illegal activity. I will show you how to do a basic subdomain search using Google Dork. You need to type site asterisk.google.com. This will help you find subdomains of google.com. Here, you can see the subdomains that appear before google.com. To view the subdomains, you have to navigate through the search results page by page. This allows you to discover many subdomains. If we want, we can also skip certain subdomains and exclude them from the search. For example, to exclude common subdomains, you can use this Google Dork. Site asterisk.google.com and URL, cloud. Here, I excluded the subdomain cloud.google.com from the results. As a result, the subdomain is no longer shown in the results. Now, we will look at deep subdomain search. This means there are multiple subdomains, one subdomain under another. The query is site asterisk.star.google.com. Here, you can see that two subdomains are shown for all results. We will use dnsdumpster.com. This is a domain reconnaissance tool. Simply put, it is used to find detailed information about any website. It's a domain research tool that attackers can use to find hosts related to a domain. For example, if an attacker wants to attack a website, what kind of information can they get using DNS Dumpster? Let's find out. I'm using Google.com as an example. Free users are limited to 50 results for a single domain, but the paid version provides much more information. Here, DNS Dumpster shows some of records for Google.com's subdomains, including the host name, IP address, ASN, ASN name, and details about open services. How an attacker may use this? An attacker can scan these IP addresses to check for any vulnerabilities. Also, if any subdomain is running an outdated or unprotected application, that can be identified and exploited as well. MX Records, Mail Exchange Records. These records show that the mail server named smpp.google.com handles emails for the domain google.com. The IP address of this mail server is 142.250.31.27. How attackers may use this. An attacker can target this mail server to attempt spamming, phishing, or even denial of service DOS, attacks. If there are any misconfigurations or weaknesses in the mail server, those could also be identified and exploited. NS records show the authoritative name servers for the domain google.com. These name servers are extremely important because they manage the domain's DNS system. How attackers may use this. If an attacker somehow gains control over these name servers, they can redirect all the traffic of the domain to their own servers. This is known as DNS hijacking. Here, you can see the TXT records, which include various domain verification codes and SPF, sender policy framework, records. We can understand which servers are authorized to send emails on behalf of Google. If an attacker tries to send emails pretending to be from Google using an unauthorized server, the SPF check may detect it and block the email. Domain verification codes usually don't have much value for an attacker, but if there's any misconfiguration, it could be exploited. Here, you can see a DNS map of Google.com, where the relationships between the domain and its subdomains are visually displayed. How attackers may use this. From this map, an attacker can easily understand how Google's network is structured and which servers are connected to each other. This helps in creating a more targeted and well-planned attack strategy. You can discover subdomains using penteus-tools.com. They have a dedicated tool on their website specifically for subdomain discovery. If you search on Google for Penteus Tools Subdomain Finder or Subdomain Discovery, you'll easily find the tool. We selected a website to find subdomains. This tool also has a paid version, but the free version offers limited functionality. 
the skin takes a little time to complete. But even from here, we can find subdomains. As you can see, the subdomains are being displayed. Using Netcraft to search for subdomains. To find subdomains using Netcraft, there are two useful tools provided by them. https://sitereport.netcraft.com. On this page, you can enter a domain, like google.com, or https://www.netcraft.com. To get a full site report, this includes hosting provider information, web technologies, site ranking, and sometimes related sites and subdomains. Use the Netcraft DNS search tool. Alternatively, visit https colon slash slash search dns.netcraft.com. This is a more direct tool for DNS and subdomain lookup. On this page, you'll see a site container search box. Next to that, simply put a dot followed by your target domain name. For example, I use Netcraft to scan netcraft.com. And as you can see, it's showing subdomains and DNS-related data. You'll notice the following information displayed. Subdomains lists all the subdomains linked to the target domain. First seen date shows when the subdomain was first discovered by Netcraft. Net block indicates the network block or range associated with the domain. Operating system OS provides information about the OS of the hosting servers. These details give a clear insight into the domain's infrastructure and network setup. Subdomain finding using AI. With TGPT, you'll find this tool on GitHub. You can also use AI-based tools to find subdomains. The best part? You can use some features of TGPT for free. Just scroll down on the GitHub page, and you'll see the installation commands for Linux or macOS. Simply copy the command, open your terminal, paste it, and press enter. The installation will begin automatically. Once the installation is complete, you can type the command tgpth. This will display the usage guide for tgpt, showing you how to use the tool. Go through the options and commands to understand how it works. To find subdomains using tgpt, just use a simple prompt like tgpt. Give me a list of possible subdomains for tesla.com. After running this command, TGPT will generate and display a list of possible subdomains based on public data and AI analysis. It's a quick and smart way to get an idea of the subdomain structure of a target website. Another way to use TGPT for subdomain discovery. There's another powerful way to use TGPT. If you want to find all possible subdomains of a target website, with this prompt, TGPT won't just give you subdomains. It will also suggest popular tools and commands used by professionals for subdomain enumeration. This can be really helpful if you're building your recon workflow or learning new techniques. If you want even more accurate and in-depth results, you can use paid APIs for subdomain enumeration. Paid APIs often provide access to real-time data, larger datasets, and hidden subdomains that free tools might miss. These are especially useful for professional penetration testers and bug bounty hunters. Subdomain finding with Asset Finder But if Asset Finder is not installed on your system yet, first update your package list by running sudo apt update. Then, make sure Go language is installed, since many tools require it. Use this command sudo apt install golom. Note, the installation might take a little time, so be patient while the process completes. Make sure your Go path is properly configured. If you face any issues, just post in our Facebook group I'll help you. Now, let's install the latest version of Asset Finder using Go. Just run this command. Go install github.com slash tomnomnom slash Asset Finder at latest. This will install Asset Finder properly without any issues. Now let's use Asset Finder to find subdomains of our target domain. I'll try it with AssetFinderTesla.com. As you can see, it's listing subdomains related to Tesla.com. As you can see, we're getting a lot of subdomains from Tesla.com using Asset Finder. It's a fast and effective tool for subdomain enumeration. Apart from Asset Finder, 
There are many other tools for subdomain discovery, like Subfinder, Amass, Sublister, and more. We'll explore all of these tools in detail in our enumeration class. So stay tuned. Using archive.org Wayback Machine. The website https colon slash slash web.archive.org, also known as the Wayback Machine, is a powerful tool for reconnaissance and ascent. For example, you can even view Facebook's early homepage from when it was first launched as a communication platform. You'll see how it looked back then. Similarly, you can check any target domain's past versions, how it evolved, what features or pages it used to have. With the Wayback Machine, you can view the full history of any website, find old subdomains, endpoints, and hidden directories, discover previous JavaScript files, login pages, admin panels, etc. Sometimes uncover security misconfigurations or expose sensitive data. This tool is extremely helpful for ethical hackers, bug bounty hunters, and cybersecurity researchers. Finding information about a target person or business. If you want to gather information about a specific person, business, or even their online presence, there are tools like Spokio.com that can help. These tools are often used for OSINT, open source intelligence. With tools like Spokio, you can search by name, phone number, email, or address, find public records, social profiles, and location history. Discover information about businesses or organizations. Apart from Spokio, there are many other tools that offer similar features for gathering data on your target. Dark Web Footprinting If you want to search for a hacker, a specific person, or even a targeted organization on the dark web, you'll need to use a search method similar to Google dorking, but for dark web platforms. For example, if you're trying to find information about a hacker or a person, Type their name or username directly into a dark web search engine. Or if you're targeting a company, try using specific search queries like Target person or organization Site specific site The more specific your search, the more accurate and useful the results will be. This method is often used for OSINT and threat intelligence in ethical hacking and investigations. I've already made a detailed video on the dark web. How to access it and how to use it safely for ethical purposes. From the next classes onward, things will get more advanced. So stay with us if you're serious about learning ethical hacking. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you for watching. See you in the next class.